Welcome back. How could a road swap between the Florida Department of Transportation and Sarasota County impact a controversial Siesta Promenade project near the corner of Stickney Point Road and US 41? In exchange for investing millions of dollars in improvements to River Road, FDOT wants the county to take control of Stickney Point Road miles away, right where Benderson Development has spent years trying to build apartments, shops, and a hotel. ABC 7's Adam Cellini joins us live from Stickney Point Road with more on how this these changes, this could change some of the dynamics of the Siesta Promenade proposal. Adam? Yeah, Scott and Jacqueline, good evening. So this is the property where Siesta Promenade could end up, and that is Stickney Point Road. Traffic has been the biggest obstacle so far. Part of the most recent application is a light right uh, behind me here on Stickney Point Road. But if this, uh, if this uh, proposal goes through, then Stickney Point Road west of uh, US 41 would become under the control of Sarasota County. This was Stickney Point Road around lunchtime a few days ago. It's why the Florida Department of Transportation has been critical of Benderson Development's request to divert traffic here for their Siesta Promenade project. They recently submitted their fourth transportation analysis for county approval. There are some, some issues as to who is going to really be in charge of what's going to happen on Stickney Point. Sura Kochman has been keeping a close eye on Siesta Promenade and appreciates FDOT's vigilance. But another proposal to make Stickney Point Road Sarasota County's responsibility in exchange for River Road could soon pass. And if it does, the county says improvements would be under the county's jurisdiction. But if those improvements impact the intersection at US 41, the state would be able to weigh in. What does weigh in mean? If FDOT says there's just too much traffic here, the congestion is horrible. We really don't think it's a good idea. Who has the final say? The county says that question can't be answered until Siesta Promenade's application is farther along. As for improvements, the most recent 500 page analysis requests a streetlight be added along Stickney Point Road at Avenue B and C. It'd be the worst idea ever because it's already hard enough to get in the beach with this light here at 41. Kochman is equally upset about another change since commissioners turned away the project over a year ago. Access points from the plaza to residential streets increasing from one to four. In our neighborhood workshops that we had with Todd Mathis from Benderson, he assured us that at most he would only have two access points through the neighborhood. Now, Todd Mathis is the project manager on behalf of Benerson Development. We were unable to reach him today for comment. Uh, Benerson submitted their most recent analysis on March 27th, and we're told if that is deemed complete by the county, then Benerson would be allowed to hold more neighborhood workshops for the people that live right behind that proposed development. Here reporting live in Sarasota County, I'm Adam Cellini. Back to you in the studio. Okay, Adam, thank you. Well, how well do you fit in your car? Suncoast seniors will have a chance this weekend to have occupational therapists make sure that they've found the safest fit. AAA is among the sponsors of the car fit event Sunday in Bradenton. Experts will guide drivers through a safety checklist and get this, it's all free. Where we're checking them at stations for the mirrors being safe, no blind spots, for the steering wheel being safe and good proximity, making sure you can reach the pedals, just all the mechanics inside the car. We even have them get outside the car to make sure they get in and out okay and their tires look okay. Well, the event is Sunday from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the SCF campus in Bradenton. Head over to our website, mysuncoast.com, for more details on how to make a reservation. State of Florida offering license-free freshwater fishing all weekend long. Florida residents and visitors can fish in any body of fresh water without a license on Saturday and Sunday as part of the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission's license-free days. One of several free fishing weekends throughout the year, FWC says it's the perfect time to introduce family and friends to fishing and not have to worry about having a license. Well, it is almost time for music on Main and Lakewood Ranch. The street will be aligned with food vendors, beer trucks, sponsor booths, as well as some activities for the kids. That's right. Let's get back out to Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan for more on tonight's fun event. Bob? We're playing a little warm-up music right now, uh, DJing that, but we're getting ready for the live music here on Main Street, first Friday of the month, right here, downtown Main Street. You mentioned the vendors lined up the street. We've got the fans ready to go in the street, and there are a lot of them here tonight. Listen to, again, Karen and Jimmy Band and Mr. Tillman. 
You got front row seats. I absolutely. I love this. You know, they love this venue. I love Lakewood Ranch, and I love this music. Yeah, it's always good to hear live music, you know, and for free. Uh, nothing beats free music. <laughs> <laughs> a free good music, too. Uh, tell me, you've been coming here quite frequently, haven't you? Uh, yes, I have. I've been following about the last three or four years. And what do you think of the weather tonight? A little warm, but it's perfect. <laughs> well, you're dressed up perfectly for yeah, it. Thanks. All right, well, let's go to the maps to show you right now. He mentioned warm. It is a little bit right now. We have 80 degrees. Thanks, Mr. Tillman. Appreciate that. He's got front row seats right there. 80 degrees, and the dew point is still nice. It's come up. Yesterday was in the 40s. Uh, again, today in the mid-60s. It'll go a little higher tomorrow in advance of a front that's headed away. That front now gathering some strength over parts of the southeast. There's the low near Louisiana, Texas. That's going to sweep a front our way. The front's going to lose some strength, though. Temperatures currently not too bad right near the coast here at Lake, uh, Lakewood Ranch. A little bit warmer, but not bad. That fog will be the biggest concern tomorrow morning. No rain tomorrow morning, but fog could be rather thick across the region. And you mentioned, you mentioned that uh, free fishing. Well, we've got a great fishing story for you coming up. Big fish, 38-incher. We'll talk about that and the rest of the week. All right, we'll get back to Bob in just a little bit. Thank you, sir. Attorney General Pam Bondi says Florida will soon file a lawsuit against drug manufacturers relating to the state's opioid problem. Bondi says pharmaceutical companies share some of the blame for the current opioid crisis in Florida. Last year, Governor Scott declared a state of emergency in Florida because of the increasing number of drug-related deaths in the state. And Bondi feels it's important Florida file its own lawsuit with the goal of stopping what she says calls bad behavior by drug companies. Florida is the third largest state in the country. We will be filing our own lawsuit, um, just as we did in the BP oil spill, because Florida deserves the maximum compensation for all the deaths that have happened in our state. A host of other cities, counties, and states have already filed suit against drug manufacturers. Florida is also working with those parties, but Bonnie says it's important to also have a standalone lawsuit just for Floridians. Well, there's a deadly bacteria, the kind resistant to any antibiotic, that is threatening Florida hospitals. The Centers for D Disease Control confirms that there were 10 cases found here in the Sunshine State. So are we at risk locally? ABC 7's Dwayne Lindo joins us with more details. Well, Jacqueline, the bacteria is being labeled as the nightmare bacteria. According to the CDC, as you mentioned, there were 10 cases. We don't know where, but we do know it can be deadly with seniors and people with chronic illnesses. It's the latest superbug that's out there. It's always scary for those patients that are in the hospital and have uh, resistant infections. Dr. Vilma Vega of Can Community Health has seen an increase in bacteria getting harder to fight. Uh, they are cases where they have no other antibiotics that we know of that at least are common power drugs. They don't work against these, these bugs. The CDC says these antibiotic resistant germs could spread like wildfire. Vega pointing to constant exposure to antibiotics as to why bacteria develops a resistance. She says antibiotics should only be used when they're needed. You limit your use of antibiotics and that is especially true of physicians who prescribe them but also for patients not to be immediately going anywhere and asking for certain antibiotics. Patients, if they could get infected, if they, especially if they've been on a lot of antibiotics. Doctors Hospital Lab Medical Director John Averett agrees, saying these strains of bacteria are acquiring resistance over time. So once a patient has it, it's difficult to treat. Those who are older or with a weaker immune system are more susceptible. These cases are generally people that have been in the hospital for a long time. They're immunocompromised for various reasons. And there's a protocol that is immediately put into place in the event their hospital admits a patient with this bug. Uh, and it includes isolation, includes, you know, diagnosis, obviously, and certain treatment protocols. Bottom line, says Vega, it's all about washing your hands frequently and not being in a state of panic. And we can't live in a state of paranoia. We have to obviously just recognize that we try to stay as healthy as we can. Now we did reach out to the Florida Department of Health to find out exactly what they're doing to help, but they have not responded to our request. Back to you. All right, Dwayne, thanks so much. Happening this weekend, the Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation hosting a walk to raise awareness for type one diabetes. The JDRF one walk is tomorrow at Nathan Benderson Park. 
16-year-old Amabella Rudd was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes when she was just five years old. And she'll be walking at the event along with her believers. The walk will begin at 9.30, followed by food, fun, family activities, and some entertainment. And the woman you see stand, sitting right next to me here will be seeing <laughs> the program tomorrow, so it's going to be a, a neat event. I'm looking forward to it, and if you haven't registered yet, I think you can still come out and show up. That starts at about 7.30 right. to get there and uh, join us. There's a lot of people raising a lot of money for yeah. type 1 diabetes. And Emma Bell has done so much for those oh, wow. causes for over the years. Stay with us. Bob will be back with your first alert forecast from uh, Music on Main. It's California Closets Lighting and Accessories Sales Event. Save up to $1,000 now through April 30th. Call 1-800-CAL-CLOSETS for your free design consultation or visit us online at californiaclosets.com. During the past 10 years, Tidewell Hospice volunteers have provided more than 1 million hours of service. They sit with patients, giving caregivers a break. They work in offices. They take their furry friends on pet therapy visits. They even clown around. Every task performed by a volunteer makes a difference in the lives of our patients and their families. Join Tidewell's volunteer team. They're truly one in a million. Tidewell Hospice, it's more than you think. If you're only hungry for a slice of apple pie, why buy the whole pie? And you certainly wouldn't want to pay for an all-you-can-eat buffet. So if you don't use your cell phone that much, why get charged for a plan that's too big or even an unlimited plan? Luckily, there's still a wireless company that shares your values. Welcome to Consumer Cellular. Our average customer pays about $25 a month for everything they need. Many pay even less as plans start at just $15 a month. You'll get a straightforward bill that's easy to understand with no surprises and all the attention you deserve from our friendly customer service team. No wonder Consumer Cellular has received the J.D. Power Award for highest customer service three times in a row. Plus, if you're an AARP member, you'll receive special discounts. It's easy to switch. You can even keep your phone and your number. So stop paying for more than you need and start your 30-day risk-free trial today. Call 800-457-2317 Go online or visit a Target store today. The Mark, Sarasota. Landmark living in the center of it all. A private oasis in the sky. Luxurious private amenities. Promenade shopping and dining. The best of downtown, downstairs. Now under construction and priced from the mid-700s. This is life, right where you want it. Call or visit our Discovery Sales Gallery today. The Mark Sarasota, presented by The Culture Group. I took my first handful of pills, and that's when all my priorities seemed to change. He would ask to use the bathroom in other people's homes. He just assumed that they would have medication. He'd go in their medicine cabinets and steal prescription drugs. I wish I knew really what these prescription pills were. We were so naive about the whole drug thing. These are all synthetic forms of heroin. Keep your medication locked up because you'll never notice that a pill is gone. Mind your meds. Learn more from the Partnership for Drug-Free Kids. It's California Closet's Lighting and Accessories Sales Event. Save up to $1,000 now through April 30th. Call 1-800-CAL-CLOSETS for your free design consultation or visit us online at californiaclosets.com. Well, there's still time to get out to Lakewood Ranch and enjoy great music, free concert, block party, food, you name it, they've got it tonight. Yeah, it's certainly a great night to do so. Let's check in with Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan, who is live on Main Street tonight with more. How is, how is it out there, Bob? Oh, outstanding. Uh, the, no doubt about it. Clear skies, a little bit of a breeze, a little bit on the warm side for some, but not for me. The humidity, not too bad either. And a great, great band getting ready to play here in just about 20 minutes or so. Uh, we have Karen and Jimmy. Jimmy Laley now joining me. Good seeing you again. Good to see you, Bob. How, how many years have we been doing this? I don't know. It has to be uh, nearly a decade. Seven or eight years. Yeah. My God. Uh, last time I think I was up on stage, I dropped your nice guitar. Yeah, that was fun, Bob. I, I really enjoyed that. <laughs> Memorable. I think I got that uh, in archives. Anyway, <laughs> what kind of music are we playing today? We're doing classic rock, southern rock, country, R&B, 
everything to get everybody dancing and having a good time. And you guys are always good. You can tell by the people set up here already. Uh, and also, it helps out. The restaurants have a good time. Everything does great. Everybody does great on this street, and, and the crowds come out to see us. We're really happy about it. We just have a great time every year that we're here. Oh, Gary does a great job, too, down there. Your oh, uncle. Oh, my cousin at Main Street cousin. Trotteria. My God, does he serve out a good batch of food. My there God. You go. I appreciate it. I look forward to the music tonight. Good seeing you again. I'm not going to touch your guitars, okay? <laughs> okay, here's what's going on with the weather right now. The Bay Cam showing fair skies up and down the coast. It is beautiful out there, and it will stay that way, too. Uh, through tonight, not a problem weather-wise at all, as we are anticipating fair skies all the way through tonight and uh, through most of the day tomorrow. Here's the weather headlines as they read, morning fog, though, prob uh, problem tomorrow morning, and then rain possibly late Saturday evening, and another front comes on Tuesday. Well, here's that high pressure ridge off the east coast of Florida. That's going to give way to this front that's now developing over the lower Mississippi Valley. And that front will bring us a chance for showers. Satellite and radar imagery again showing no rain around here. Things looking really quiet. And as far as the high goes today, well, warmed in the low to mid 80s. Currently, it's 80 sunshine and the temperatures are going to stay fairly warm tonight. The dew point is 66. There's a look at the coastal regions in the mid 70s to upper 70s. Inland area is still in the mid 80s. And that fog forecast is going to be a little bit of a concern tomorrow morning. The winds will be basically out of the southwest tomorrow. Boaters beware. Uh, seas will be running two to three feet, a little bit breezy tomorrow in advance of that front. And then as far as the forecast goes, we are anticipating a little chance for rain throughout the day. Better chance of rain comes later on in the evening, and that rain chance isn't all that high at this point. Uh, temperatures will stay rather comfortable tomorrow. As I mentioned, there is a slight chance for a thunderstorm, but it'll be basically uh, mainly uh, some showers around. Futurecast is showing that front approaching, and again, that front uh, will bring clouds and a good chance for showers all the way through Sunday morning early, and that is basically clouds on Sunday with a chance at 30% for a few showers. Well, the big story has been the winter storms that continue to roll through parts of the Great Lakes, the upper Mississippi Valley, and look at the snow totals. This is expected through Sunday. Some areas getting up to six inches, even 12 inches in the western portions of North Dakota. So tough going uh, for boaters there, uh, not boaters, but for folks up there, drivers, as they make their way through. So if you're down here and you're not going home yet, you might want to stick around for a little while. Here's the boating forecast as we see it. Winds out of the southwest at 15 knots. The water temperature at 76. And as far as the seven day forecast goes, we are anticipating some nice weather uh, for us tomorrow at least through the day, and then a good chance for showers developing later on in the afternoon. Again, a slight chance for showers even in the morning and afternoon on Sunday. A little break on Monday and a 60% chance of storms possible on Tuesday afternoon. Well, I got to tell you, the water temperatures are warming up, and so is the fishing. And just in time for spring break, all the guides have two a days, and the fishing's heating up. Here's more. Bait's been hard to find here in South Sarasota Bay. So we made a quick stop at New Pass Bait Shop to pick up some shrimp and some tips from some other area guides. And you guys, how about the kings? You going for kings out there lately? Yeah, we've been playing around little kingfish. They're spotty, but they're here and there. We headed out to the Fisher Reef about a mile and a half off of Lido and found this. That's a big mound of bait right there. And where there's bait, there's usually fish. Florida Gator alumni, now Atlanta residents, took their kids Riley and Jonah fishing and Riley was living the life of Riley, showing everyone up in the process. Got a blue runner. Another bait and another hookup. This time, a little more fight. Well, that is baby kingfish, and we're gonna have to throw him back. Is that See, right? See, they don't have the orange spots on them, like the Spanish right. mackerel. A short time later, Captain Johnny spots something near Captain Alan Ross' boat of Magic Fishing Adventures. I can back here behind you. Something just struck back here. <laughs> nice catch, nice catch. After catching a few more blue runners, Johnny puts a bigger bait on a bigger rig, and with a slow troll, sure enough, fish on. You know it's big when Johnny gets the belt. At first, we thought it was one of those huge kings. Well, Bob, here we are, out trying to catch kingfish. What do we got on? We got a cobia. And there's three of them. Four of them. Four, four or five cobia. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah, you Look don't want to gaff these because you never know if they're going to be big enough or not. They have to be 33 inches to the fork. Oh, yeah, he's 35. 35 Hi, inches. Yeah. Good job, Jonah. 
Way to go, buddy. Oh my gosh, is that great or what? Well, we had Jonah and Riley at today. We caught us a big old cobia. You know, this is the time of year that kingfish and cobia are showing up. So remember, take your kid fishing because someday they may take you. Great picture sent in too with some of the fish. This is that kingfish that uh, Captain Allen caught. He a huge one out there. Also, Steve, Steve Herrick, Coach Steve Herrick, Beef Fishing Adventures. Last two bait caught, caught some nice snook right there. And as far as the rest of the fishing goes, it is happening up and down the coast. We are continuing to see those spotted sea trout too. Jim sending that photo in, and that's a huge trout. He let that go, by the way. He's a vegetarian uh, for other folks to catch and release too, because a lot of them are spawning right now. Appreciate it. Uh, we are here live at Lakewood Ranch, and people are showing up. It's getting big here, big crowd, great weather. We'll have much more coming up at six. Back to you. All right, Bob. Wow, look at that crowd. Thank you. Well, time now to check your first alert traffic for the drive home. We are seeing a crash on US 41 in Sarasota right in front of the Sarasota Bradenton International Airport. It is causing backups in both the north and southbound lanes this evening. Stay with us. We're going to have your entertainment news right after this. My name is Stefan Campagna. We're Ben Gates and Dramus, and here is your law tip of the week. If you've been arrested in the state of Florida, the state attorney's office is already working on your prosecution. It's time to work on your defense. So give us a call. We've got your back. Fun for the whole family. The 26th annual Venice Sharks Tooth Festival, benefiting special athletes of Sarasota County, fossil vendors, arts and crafts, food, children's games, and live entertainment with headliners the Gator Creek Band on Friday night, Rockin' Rogues, Maiden Kane, Glass Onion, Kettle of Fish, Paisley Craze, and the Boogeymen. Admission $4, children 12 and under free. Parking is free. The annual Venice Sharks Tooth Festival, April 13th, 14th, and 15th at the Venice Airport Festival Grounds. The La Musica International Chamber Music Festival, the annual celebration of a distinctive cultural gem in Sarasota with renowned musicians from around the world. April 9th through April 18th at the Sarasota Opera House. Visit lamusicafestival.org, click on Festival, open Tickets, and get your seats now. I heard about the Detoli Cancer Center through friends of mine who had been treated here and were very pleased with the treatment. If there is prostate cancer, we at the Detoli Cancer Center will find it using 3D color flow Doppler ultrasound. And that helped precisely identify where my cancer was. I can tell you that you will not find a finer, more professional team of clinicians anywhere in the world. 20 years ago, the moviegoers of Sarasota looked up at the silver screen and wanted something more. And they got exactly what they wanted. 20 years of some of the best independent films from around the world. The most iconic Hollywood stars walking the red carpet. The most glamorous parties in Southwest Florida. 20 years building up to the most exciting announcement in, well, 20 years. At the Sarasota Film Festival, April 13th to the 22nd. Soldiers in the Army National Guard serve to give back to their country and communities. Their part-time commitment qualifies them for an array of benefits, such as affordable health and life insurance benefits, education benefits, including tuition assistance, student loan repayment and GI Bill programs, a retirement plan based on part-time service, and VA home mortgages. Visit NationalGuard.com to learn more about all the benefits available in the Army National Guard. In entertainment news, actress Jamie King says her four-year-old son is badly shaken but safe after a man jumped on top of the car he was sitting in and shattered the rear windshield. Police say 47-year-old Paul Floyd was arrested on suspicion of battery and cha child endangerment. Police say Floyd kicked and jumped on the windshield until the glass broke. He also threw a can at King as she got out to try and stop him. King condemned paparazzi for taking pictures of the scene instead of helping her. We say the photographers are now under investigation. Kate Hudson is expecting the almost famous actress announced today that she's pregnant with her third child, a baby girl, with musician boyfriend Danny Fujikawa. The 38-year-old says the pregnancy has not been easy, citing motion sickness, food aversion, and exhaustion. 
Hudson has two sons from previous relationships, 14-year-old Ryder and 6-year-old Bingham. We'll step aside Indiana Jones, it may be time for Indiana Joan. Steven Spielberg <laughs> says that after the next Indiana Jones movie, which will probably be Harrison Ford's last, he's open to the idea of woman, a woman taking over that title role. He tells the UK paper The Sun that the time has come for the iconic character to take a different form. Well, Greece is still the word. The classic big screen musical is returning to theaters for its 40th anniversary, playing in more than 700 U.S. theaters on April 8th, 11th, and 14th. I think that's one of my top five favorite movies. The music is incredible. Yes. Yeah, it reminds me of my high school year, <laughs> dating myself there. We'll be right back with more news. Stay with us. It's California Closet's Lighting and Accessories Sales Event. Save up to $1,000 now through April 30th. Call 1-800-CAL-CLOSETS for your free design consultation or visit us online at californiaclosets.com. Says Art, Sarasota's only area rug superstore. 